Hello everyone, welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson 11, uh, titled Male and Female Reproductive Systems. We are going to get into some terms that you've heard before. Uh, sometimes I'm sure that you use other names for these terms, but what we're going to do in this class, in this lesson, uh, is keep everything academic. So we are going to discuss testes, uh, the penis, we are going to discuss all the male reproductive uh, organs, we are going to discuss the female reproductive organs including the vagina, cervix, and ovaries. Um, we are going to use all these terms and you are going to use these terms in your assignments. So please get used to it, get familiar with it, get comfortable with it, and please do not use um, incorrect or unscientific terms for these organs. Um, we are going to keep it academic uh, and professional here. So let's jump into it. We are going to treat this very similarly to um, our last lesson where we've got some notes for you to copy down, uh, essentially some definitions, and then we have a diagram where we're going to talk about where these things are and what we're looking at. So we're gonna start with the male reproductive system um, and we're gonna start with key point one, uh, which is the testes. So testes uh, are what produces um, the sperm, uh, which are the male gametes, by meiosis and they also release, release hormones. Essentially they are the testicles. Uh, the testes are what produce sperm. So if we're talking about it, that is right down here. Uh, in the testicles, this is where sperm is produced. Um, the next uh, portion is referred to as the scrotum. So the scrotum is what protects the testes. Uh, it is the skin that surrounds the testicles. Um, and the function that it performs is it allows um, the testes to be kept at a cooler temperature. So um, Sperm and the testes are very, very temperature dependent. Uh, if it gets too warm, there can definitely be damage, which is why the testes are located outside of the male body. Uh, they are contained within the scrotum and that protects them, but they are not within the body like um, the ovaries um, are for uh, a female. Uh, they have different temperature requirements and that's the main reason they are outside of the body. We then have the tube that leads uh, from the testes uh, towards the penis. It actually curls up and around um, to come here and enter here. So that is known as the vas deferens. So it is the tube through which sperm travels to eventually get to uh, the penis where it can be expelled. Um, so we have the testes which make sperm, uh, all controlled or uh, contained within the scrotum here. That sperm travels through the vas deferens towards the end of the penis where it is expelled. Uh, it then travels after the vas deferens. It is a muscular tube in which the sperm mixes with fluids to produce semen as the sperm moves from the testes to the urethra. So the urethra is the opening through which the sperm leaves the body. It is, oops, I apologize. It is this tube that travels through the, the penis. It comes from the bladder and also from the vas deferens. Uh, and it is released, it is contained within the penis. So the penis contains the urethra and is used for the delivery of sperm. Now humans um, have internal fertilization. Uh, sperm and egg meet together inside the female body uh, so these structures allow that to happen. The testes make the sperm protected by the scrotum. The vas deferens transfers the sperm to the urethra. The urethra is contained within the penis, uh, which is used for delivering the sperm for reproductive purposes. Um, I hope that all made sense. If you're wondering what a few of these other things are, this would be the rectum and the colon back here. Um, and we also have uh, the prostate. So there are uh, many other different organs in here as well. We're just showing the reproductive ones mostly. So again, to reiterate, it goes from the sperm go from the testes where they're created through the vas deferens into the urethra 
and then out the tip of the penis, um, that is, which is used to deliver the sperm. If you have any questions about anything, please let me know. Uh, feel free to go back and watch this again. Uh, if you'd like to send me an email or ask in person, feel free. Uh, what we'll now do is move on to the female reproductive system, which you have space for, and a diagram on the next page. So, ovaries are like the testes, except for females. They produce eggs, pardon me, which are female gametes, um, and they are, this is done by meiosis. Uh, they also release hormones. So, in this case, uh, the ovaries are right here you can see that this is kind of like an egg sac. You have two of them, um, although we're only showing one, and we have this tube or this hand that seems to wrap around. So the ovary is the place where eggs are formed. Uh, the oviduct or fallopian tubes is the location of fertilization. So essentially the egg is caught by these fallopian tubes, um, and it is a tube that connects to the uterus. So uh, we have the eggs in this white part and it is caught by the fallopian tube. It is then traveled down the fallopian tube into the uterus here. Uh, fertilization would happen right about here within the tube. So the sperm needs to travel all the way into the fallopian tube to have fertilization. Uh, you've noticed that we've got um, key point three right here for ovaries, but not the fallopian tube. So it is a little bit different um, in what they are. The ovaries make the egg and the fallopian tube catches and transports that egg after it's been fertilized. Uh, we have the uterus then. The uterus protects and nourishes the zygote during development. Uh, it connects uh, the oviducts to the cervix. So. Uh, the uterus is where the um, fertilized egg will live. It uh, is fertilized in the fallopian tube by sperm and then travels down into the uterus where it is protected and nourished and then will develop into an embryo and a baby. Um, the cervix is the opening to the uterus right here. So the cervix is the opening through which sperm travel. Uh, on the way to the uterus and the fallopian tubes. Uh, it will also uh, open up or dilate to allow the baby to leave the body during childbirth, which we're gonna talk about next lesson. Um, we also, uh, in females, have the vagina. Uh, the sperm are deposited here, and it is also the opening through which the baby leaves the body, uh, or which unfertilized eggs leave the body through menstruation. Uh, so we have the cervix, which is the opening to the um, uterus, and then we have the vagina, which is the place where sperm are deposited by the penis. In this particular diagram, the person is facing the other way. So this right here is the rectum and the colon, and this is the bladder. So the vagina is here where sperm is deposited, it then travels through the cervix, the uterus, to the fallopian tube, where it meets the egg. The egg has come from the ovary. So I hope that this made sense to you. Um, I hope that each piece in and of itself makes sense uh, and how they have a particular uh, flow um, and the reasons why they are structured like that. Um, what I would like you to do is to write a story that shows the journey of sperm throughout all of these different um, structures. So sperm starts in the testes and the eggs start in the ovary. What I want you to do is write a story that describes the journey of a sperm cell from when it's formed in the testes until fertilization in the fallopian tube. You have to use the structures that we learned in this lesson in your story, as well as the structures of both the sperm and the egg. So the flagellum, the mitochondria, the centrioles, the acrosome, the nucleus, the zona pellucida, the uh, cytoplasm. You should use all of these terms. Uh, the story should be about a page to a page and a half. There's space given to you in your booklet for you to write the story by hand. You can also type it if you want and a list of all the terms that you need to include is in your booklet on the assignment or your job page. Uh, I hope this was
helpful to you. I hope this made sense, and I hope we were able to keep this academic and professional uh, as we learn the different structures of the male and the female reproductive systems. Again, if you guys have any questions about anything, please let me know. I'm definitely willing to help out, answer questions as best I can. Um, but until next time, thanks very much for watching, everyone.